In this update, we're going to be highlighting a Christmas time snowstorm, then sweeping changes look to unfold the days after Christmas heading into the new year. Let's take a look at the jet stream this morning. You can see the area of low pressure off the coast of California. That was responsible of bringing all the heavier rain, if not flooding rains, in and around the Santa Barbara region. Further south, there's our subtropical jet stream, complements of the El Nino type setup that we're in. That's bringing in more of a southwest flow, and that's a warm flow across the middle of the country, but it's also gonna set up a very heavy rain setup across the middle of the country as well, while we're waiting for our cold front that's gonna be coming in from the northwest. So as this low pressure center will be moving eastbound, this will be diving southeast. That will set the stage for a snowstorm that looks to unfold over the next couple of days so let's take a look at that setup further south into the southwest for today because some of these thunderstorms you got to be concerned about because there are going to actually have some larger hail possible associated within this zone in and around you know portions in the yuma region up here towards phoenix into the tucson area this actually has a slight risk for excessive rainfall. They do actually have flood watches in place as this system will be dropping at least one to two inches possible of heavy rain across this region. And like I mentioned, some of those actually could turn severe with some larger hail associated. So as we get deeper into the day and heading into tomorrow, there's our cold front. It will be draped across portions of the Southwest, That'll start kicking off with some snow showers in and around the New Mexico region. But further north, the snow is already going to be taking, a sh taking shape and across portions of Idaho into Wyoming. As these systems, this area, this low pressure here and this low pressure here will eventually kind of merge together and that will be forming our snowstorm. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. And I would love to reach 225,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's Let's kind of zoom in heading into Saturday night because I think that's when the heaviest rain will start to unfold across portions of Texas into Oklahoma, back into portions of Kansas, into portions of Nebraska. Look at the warm surge. That's the Southwest flow we talked about. And there's that stalled frontal boundary, that warm front all the way north, guys. That's actually gonna go all the way to Canada. That means plenty of well above average higher temperatures across this region. But back behind it, that's where our snowstorm is gonna start coming into fruition back into portions of Wyoming. Should be seeing some very heavy snow from this setup across portions of the Rockies. And that will continue to push eastbound heading into the warm sector. And this is gonna be warm for your Christmas Eve. In fact, some record highs actually could potentially, 13 record highs the National Weather Service is forecasting really mainly along that warm front that is going to be lifting as far north there in Minnesota and to uh, you know Wisconsin here back into Michigan whenever you're seeing temperatures in the low to mid 50s for this time of year that's well above average folks and that's going to be enough to actually impact some some records across this region but there's our cold front and it's going to be a sharp temperature gradient as that slowly shifts eastward so as we get into that Christmas Eve uh, time frame there's the rain so it's likely going to be still raining in portions of north texas and central texas but that will end during the daytime hours but shifting into east texas especially into louisiana by then back into arkansas through missouri up here and towards uh, I iowa all the way up right along that warm front right into uh minnesota then of course back behind it that's where our snowstorm is going to be and the darker blue here that's the heavier snows are going to be unfolding now sneaking into south dakota getting into western portions of kansas and that will start to migrate into portions of western uh, Kansas as well. So, but there's your cold front, right? That's this is Christmas morning. As you wake up on Christmas morning, if you kind of live, you know, to the west of this line right here, 
it's basically going to feel a lot like Christmas. <laughs> if you live to the east of this line, it's not going to feel a lot like Christmas, folks. So that's where your cold front will be moving. But that will be slowly shifting eastbound into the days, you know, after Christmas. So, you know, looking at the setup, you know, kind of going forward, here's your setup with the snowstorm. So as this pushes off and further off to the east, it's going to start to kind of uh, expand outwards and kind of, you know, the southern flank of this is going to be pretty fast, more progressive type moving. That's going to bring the heavier rain swath into a good part of Alabama, into Georgia, back into Kentucky, through Illinois, into Indiana, going into Ohio, heading into later in the day on your Christmas time frame. That's where the snowstorm is going to be coming out of the Rockies, going more into Nebraska by then. We'll be in, in, you know, going into portions of Iowa, but I think that's kind of where it starts to stop, right? So there's the there's the the, the afternoon, you know, kind of feels like temperatures for Christmas Christmas a day time frame. So it's going to be feeling like I mentioned every bit of christmas i mean this is you know a complete opposite of what you're likely going to see as that stronger cold front from christmas christmas eve to christmas day time frame and it's going to be a sharp temperature gradient and look at that in the 20s feels like in the afternoon hours in oklahoma but that's where the snowstorm is going to be likely going to be as we get deeper into the day on a Christmas day. So the low pressure is going to be down to about 1,005, not too fairly significant, but I think that's where it's gonna stop because this is gonna be starting to kind of, you know, expand outwards. And as it expands outwards, it's gonna lose some of its instability as we continue to move across the east. So we're still get the rain across further south into portions of, uh, of, of the northeast, but back behind it, we don't really have a form of a low pressure any longer. So now you just kind of get the backside type snow, and then you get kind of like these, these lake effect type snow bands that will be racing across portions of the Great Lakes and eventually into portions of the Ohio Valley. But that what that will actually do is, that'll drop down some colder air from, from Canada. And that will be responsible to give you some of those lake effect snow showers across those regions. We're talking the upper Great Lakes regions, likely probably areas into Ohio, maybe portions of New York into Pennsylvania. But this is gonna be your wraparound moisture that's gonna be coming in on the backside of that low pressure. But it will be bringing the colder air finally to the east but that won't happen until several days you know after christmas because it's we're going to be watching these ridges of high pressure that's been really kind of highlighted over a good part of the u.s for several weeks we've been in more of a kind of a zonal flow type setup here's the rain prospects over the next five days we got the system now that's coming out of Southern California, extending through Arizona, through New Mexico. And then we got a second piece of energy from that Southwest flow, pulling in that Gulf moisture that will surge all the way to Canada. So we should see some he healthy rains and heavier rains the further to the coast you live. This is definitely some welcome rains across these regions in Louisiana. They're putting a major dent in that exceptional drought they, they were in. Uh, for about uh, you know a long time so the last couple of weeks they've definitely put a major dent in that drought but as we extend the view and head towards that Tuesday these are the days after Christmas so back behind that cold front you're going to have a little bit of a drier air that's typically what happens with stronger cold fronts you get a little bit of clearing on the back side of that stronger cold front so the setup with the rain prospects or the precipitation prospects from tuesday to friday kind of look like this you're gonna have a swath that's coming out of as that snowstorm starts to wind down into iowa will feed into wisconsin heading into michigan and through portions of the mid-atlantic and into the northeast and then further south the closer you are to the coast the more instability you're going to have and the heavier rains are going to be associated with it in the Carolinas and through Florida. But what's going to happen the days after Christmas, you, for your Christmas week, so Christmas is on a Monday this year. So that week from, you know, Monday to that Saturday time frame heading to the end of the month, you're going to start to see some cooler anomalies start to pull further south. 
So as that ridge has been kind of locked over a good part of the lower 48 for an extended period of time, actually the last couple of weeks, December has been plenty warm. I don't need to tell you guys, but finally we're going to start to retreat, right? So we're going to start to retreat some of that some of that ridging and the further north it's able to get, especially as it gets closer to Alaska there, we get these height anomalies under, up over Alaska, that's gonna pull the but pull kind of the colder air underneath. And as we get deeper, heading into your Christmas week, going into those first couple of days of January, yeah, the, the, the setup gets even more evident, right? So we're starting to see more ridging starting to lift further and further north. And the further we can get this up over Alaska, the more opportunities you're going to allow this colder air to kind of sink in underneath and link up with that more active subtropical jet stream coming in out of the, the Pacific Ocean. You can see it better on the, the 500 millibar. And yeah, as the ridging, you start to get more of a kind of a, a blocking setup as you some of these teleconnections start to go more negative that will drive down the colder air and you know again push the the warmer anomalies up out of the the lower 48 and push them back up into canada and back up over portions of alaska will allow that colder air to funnel in underneath and we should start to see much colder air by then by the by the first week of january for a good part of the lower 48 and that will possibly be linking up with that more active subtropical jet stream by then as well so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update why i protect you before and after the storm